Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. Good evening. It's 4.12 p.m. on Tuesday, January 24th, 2023. And this is the meeting of the Sandpoint Arts, Culture, and Historic Preservation Commission. And we're now called to order. Uh, number two, we're going to do the roll call. For the record, I am Chairwoman Ellie Cessnas, presiding at the City of Sandpoint Council Chambers at 111. No. 1123 Lake Street in Sandpoint, Idaho. And the commission members are present are Hannah Combs, Barry Burgess, Keely Gray, Caitlin Shook, Rick Decker. And Mike Lifkow is here remotely. Hi, Mike. Yes, ma'am. Yep. I'm here. Uh, thank you. And absent is Karen Wiedemeyer and Woody Sherwood. <clears throat> Number three. Let's head on to meeting minutes approval. Uh, so the minutes from the commission's last meeting uh, last month, December 27th, 2022. May I have a motion to approve last month's minutes? A motion to approve the minutes. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right. Motion passes. Meetings minutes are approved. Moving onward, four uh, A uh, shows the stir funds that are available in the downtown region. We have one hundred thousand forty three. I so bad. Heather, can you read this one? Absolutely. <laughs> Some of these are a little bit of a tongue twister. So it's, um, and I'll just do a quick overview for our new um, uh, commissioners. So Sandpoint Urban Renewal Agency, Sura, that's what we talked about earlier in onboarding. And so we'll always talk about what funds we have. So for the downtown area, we have $143,697.72. Northern is $78,623.73. Um, advanced to date for the silver box. So that's our art on loan program. So those are three stanchions. And as we get further more, we'll talk about that program, uh, um, but we're going to continue that. So we had reserve funds for that program and the remaining balance is $5,159 and 78 cents. Is it correct that Sura updates this balance quarterly instead of monthly? Um, that's a great question. I have to get back to you on that. We'll find out. And then I'll also house you all with the maps of the different districts as well. Oh, right. right. Mm -hmm. All right. Was there any uh, questions on those financials before we move on? All right. Let's head on to old business. 5A is the NEA ARP subgrant program. Can you give us an update? Absolutely. So things are going well. Um, we sent out our grant agreement um, to the eight arts nonprofits um, that were awarded. And um, we're all, everybody signed the agreement. We're just waiting for one, um, which is the museum. They have had trouble obtaining their unique identification ID from the government. And um, They've been reporting to us that um, they've been following up on that as much as they can. Um, so they did not receive their grant agreement yet because um, they have to have that number to, to be able to officially receive funds. Um, so we've been checking in and we hope to get an update soon on where they are with that. Um, and then, so now the period um, has, has begun the period of performance and then it will be a semi-annual report um, which is next, and I'll keep you all posted as things progress. I have a question. Does Absolutely. It say somewhere, what the you said there's eight, eight organizations that got definitely. Does it say somewhere which eight? Absolutely. So, the the eight different organizations um, that were awarded, we have um, POAC, and they received twenty four thousand dollars. 
The Music Conservatory received $24,000. Uh, the museum received $12,500. And the YMCA received $12,500. Um, and then 7,000 went to Lake Ponderay Repertory Theater, um, Festival of Music, Canada, and um, let's see here. Carousel. The Carousel of Smiles. And um, I'm gonna show you all an amazing research resource on our website where you can look at staff packets and look up different things, which I do all the time. So it will be helpful. And um, I'd be happy to send anybody any information um, on, on that program particularly. All right. Is there any other questions on 5A? All right, let's move on to 5B, the cultural collective campaign. Okay. So go ahead and open this up. Hopefully I'm not having any future problems here. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's a technology ghost. Okay. So here we are. Um, you all have heard me talk about this seed of an idea um, as I was developing the program called the Cultural Collective Campaign. And I have my little tagline here, imagine a place where the community doesn't just weigh in, but sees themselves in a project. And that's a huge one. Um, in terms of how this works, so there'll be a landing page that will be developed where the community could download photos, documents, potentially audio and visual um, files. And when, and so we would, go ahead and launch the awareness of this when there's an identified project at the city that's in development. Um, notifications about the different projects can go out on Engaged Sandpoint. Um, they can be on our Arts, Culture, and Historic Preservation landing page, Facebook, all the different um, communication uh, vehicles that we have. Um, we were looking at the best way to uh, launch the program, and we felt like it was a perfect opportunity to partner with the Bonner County Historical Society. Um, and looking at the, sorry, I'm gonna get this little guy off of here. Let me see if I can move it. There we are. Oh, shit. Okay, there we are. Um, the museum's mission is history creating community. They specialize in preserving archives um, for the community. Um, it can support the goals of continuing to collect the community's history. Um, so the idea would be that the platform would be on the museum's website, and then the information would be donated to the museum and it would be going into their archives where they'll be preserving it indefinitely. Um, the, so in terms of that partnership, the city would have full access and permission for use of those archives to use in the projects. So, so this is the large goal. Um, the, and then ter in terms of commitment, I'd be the organizer and administrator and really help with um, the bandwidth of the program um, and support um, that portion of it for the museum. Um, I'm so glad you agreed, Rick. And then Hannah's the archival um, lead and the preservationist on this. And in terms of volunteers, I see the museum volunteers, all of us, community members being a part of this program. Um, I have this um, implemented in my action plans, why we would be doing this. It's a professional development opportunity for preservationists, local artists, creatives, and youth. I see synergy with this um, if the, the city is to have a um, youth advisory committee. I think it'd be great to create um, little historians out of them and have them go around the community gathering history. Uh, theme five, action 5.7, it would be to enhance and augment local historic preservation education and advocacy. Uh, and it really just serves as a foundation to many of the goals in the master plan. Immediate projects that I see this um, having synergy with would be Travers, Dog Park, we're talking about a police exhibit, downtown waterfront competition, the watershed, and then art for the soul. Um, that uh, we'll get into the weeds later, but 
there is a private art collection owned by the hospital that has over 455 pieces. All of the information about those pieces is in one amazing woman's mind mm -hmm. and she is aging. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to figure out a way to collect that history. Mm -hmm. So I see um, this being such an amazing win. Um, things that are going to take a little bit of time to develop would be the platform. It would need to be done when the museum is ready to have that done and when Rick, you're available. Um, so the way I did get our green light from leadership here at the city, which is very exciting. So um, I imagine I'll just start this rolling this out kind of at a grassroots level. And even if it has to be me out there with my voice memo on my phone. Um, for some particular projects just to get started. I just think this is an amazing platform to use for all the things that we're going to be doing here with historic preservation, culture, and Liban art. So that's that's the main thing. And so what I'm going to do is keep this going and then I'll I'll let you know when these different opportunities arise. Um, any questions about this? No, I like partnering with other organizations, you know, that it's not just us doing right. it in here, right? Like we're just supposed to support mm -hmm. the the regional organizations and mm -hmm. stuff. So I love that. And I, you know, it's great. Like the the oral stories, you okay. know, after uh, the first time you brought it up, we actually had dinner with a, a friend. He's, you know, grew up in hope and just has some hilarious stories, right? you know? Yeah. And, that, and that was like, I didn't even think about it until he was halfway through the first story. And I was like, this is perfect. Like Gary, yeah. we'd love to talk to you. Are you thinking of Gary Peach? Um, oh. No, Phillips. Okay. Cause I was just reading Gary Peach's book on um, the history of hope. So anyway, okay, I'm yeah. that with my eight year old and it's so amazing. Yeah. yeah. But it's just some like great stories, you yeah. know, but I, I think the problem is they, they may want to like censor themselves a little bit, oh, just, yes. you know, because there's, so, but, uh, but at the same time, like, I think if, if we make it comfortable yep. and then, you know, once we will record everything, just speak freely, mm -hmm. let's record everything and then absolutely censor it after if you don't want something. Yeah. Then, but and the museum has done an amazing job of creating a platform for how to facilitate oral histories um, the easiest way to go about it, um, questions to ask, um, agreements. So it's already all set up. That's cool. Um, it was just a capacity thing um, back in the day when I was at the museum. Every time we'd get the program up, something would happen. And a lot of it was like COVID or, you know, different things. But I am determined to make sure we're not losing our history. Um, it's just more important than ever because so many times you'll hear somebody go oh I wish we would have gotten more information from so-and-so because they were the I heard it today they were the first park ranger at Glacier National mm -hmm. Park mm -hmm. you know and I'm just like oh my gosh so I'm glad you guys are excited about this too and I think we just need to get started doing it and then kind of uh, keep tweaking it as as we build it and evolve it. Anna did you have any comments on uh, just that Heather and I have talked about it in depth and I'm excited to see where it can go and build the capacity to make it happen. We're going to have an army of oral history facilitators, right? So do you foresee like a, a training sessions for Absolutely. facilitators and then Yes, nice. definitely. Okay. And again, what's beautiful about this being a project um, with me at the city, I can go to the museum and help support Hannah by doing the training with volunteers and helping her build that network. Um, because you guys are very, very busy right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions on that? All right, let's head on to item number 5C. The downtown waterfront competition. Okay. Oh, this is an exciting one. Mm -hmm. So I finally really get to talk about this um, because I, I have this beautiful manual to be able to share. Um, this manual is actually just a rough draft. Um, and after I share it with you, I'll show you how you can access it. Um, so this has been, this actually was presented to council. Um, that was last. Wednesday, was last, Wednesday. last Wednesday. And there was some, uh, upon the presentation of this to council, the council decided there were some tweaks that needed to be made. 
So the, it's currently being revised and then it will be um, presented to council again. So it has, it has not been adopted yet. Um, but this is um, the manual for the design competition. This manual is for the design teams that will be um, put together to um, for the contest essentially. And so as you're reading through it, it's just really good to um, understand it through that particular lens. Um, so in terms of, we've talked about the design competition um, at length and essentially um, one of the things that the city has done a really great job of is um, planning. And right now, um, it, it's absolutely incredible how many plans, I'm gonna skip down there, that we, we have in place right now. Um, and so it essentially starts up here with the urban renewal, the comprehensive plan, the Sand Creek Byway Downtown Streets Plan and Design Guide, the downtown parking, recent downtown impacts, the strategic planning effort, the arts, culture, and historic preservation plan, the multimodal transportation plan, the comprehensive plan update, housing and economic analysis plan, the current zoning, the downtown parking study, the city owned property, and then potential lot redevelopment, um, Farman's Landing, and then the Parks and Recreation Master Plan. We also have the Sand Creek Downtown Waterfront con concept plan, the city beach concept plan, and then the carousel of smiles. So um, that's that's an amazing amount of plans that we have put together um, that have direct action plans associated with them. And um, traditionally with a plan, we would have an RFP that we put out and um, then you have a consultant that you hire and um, we go from there. And, and really that's kind of a, a one focused opinion. And the beauty of this master plan, this, this, which would be the result of the downtown waterfront design competition, it's where all of these plans coalesce into the one master plan for that downtown area. And this is what you're looking at in terms of your focus area. So as you can see, you have downtown, you have Sand Creek, and then you have City Beach. And let's pop up here. I'm going to be kind of pulling through this a little bit here. So um, the objective of the design competition will be to celebrate and honor the past, recognize the pressures and demands, the needs that are presently um, facing the city, and then define the future of downtown Sandpoint and its waterfront. Um, and it's really important that with plans like this, it helps us to be proactive instead of reactive. Um, and this will also, what will happen is this will be a complement and an update to the comprehensive plan that we're, that's per currently um, being revised. And what, what that will do is change future zoning um, and code changes and refine, it will finalize the concepts for the downtown waterfront and city beach um, so that the city and the property owners can move forward with design and construction. And I think that's a really big one when we're talking about developers and private property owners to be able to have this document that has community input in it and has all of the planning in, encompassed in it and show the, it to them and, and kind of front load them and say, this is what the community wants. Um, this is what we're seeing. I think it will be really helpful as we're moving forward with, with the development. Um, one of the other things um, that has been identified um, is the Main Street American program. And it's a program for cities that helps with historic preservation and it supports vitality. Um, it, it drives development and it also helps us understand what does development look like. Um, other things that are really um, important in this design program that we're trying to understand and to solve um, would be a framework. So how does uh, how is there a holistic framework that integrates and enhances new development knitting together the public and the private? 
um, nature incorporating and enhancing um, that front porch, you know, that you see there with the Sand Creek, working with um, the Cabinet Mountain, Lake Pend Oreille, and Sand Creek. Uh, water quality is a huge one. That one of the reasons why the city acquired Farman's Landing, um, understanding the ecology, making sure that there's bank stabilization happening. Um, it's huge. And then this also, the Sand Creek goes up to a larger project, which is the watershed as well. So this is connected in so many ways. Uh, tribes acknowledge uh, sand paints ancestral lands with the Kalispell, the Kootenai, Coeur d'Alene, um, and many of the other tribes that traverse these lands. Uh, history, so we wanna make sure that we're celebrating and respecting uh, the history of the community, uh, the National Historic Districts, um, all the grit and tenacity that the early settlers brought here. Uh, recreation, how can we really activate that area and have year round recreation for residents and tourists? Um, and I mean, we've, we have like horseback riding, skiing, snow sports, boating, fishing. Wouldn't it be amazing if there was an ice rink down there? I mean, there's so many great possibilities. And then arts and culture. So that's integrating art, increasing the diversity and accessibility experiences through that downtown waterfront. So these are these are seven um, core things along with economic development. So how, how do we generate opportunities that can build the community um, and create those public private partnerships? Uh, movement and accessibility. So pedestrian and bicycle networking is really important. We've heard that from the community. It's uh, making sure that um, there's parking lots that can be easily um, accessed, um, that families can easily get to City Beach um, through the traffic, all that, the flow of that. Um, resilience is another topic. And um, so how do you build natural systems with new development? How do those things you know, work hand in hand? Um, and then implementation. So this is making sure that the community and the business voice is recognized in all of these planning efforts. And as you can see on the right-hand side, you have your design goals. So those are what we're looking for from these design teams. So we have holistic framework, going to incorporate nature, protect and enhance water. And we just went through all 11 of them. And these are really great things. Um, I know when I'm always faced with the public, it's really great to have those elevator speeches and those talking points that you can talk to. Like, how do we kind of dilute this more into a nutshell so it's digestible to the public? And then um, there's a lot of historic content that um, I had put together um, for the competition manual. So the design teams can truly understand the history of our community. So it's just very early history um, here. And then we talk about um, all of the settlements that went on, the development of downtown, the original site, and then the new site, uh, Farragut period and the continued growth. Uh, we also mentioned historic preservation in here, and you'll notice this is a huge theme and component. We, we make sure that they understand that we do have a historic district, that it was expanded, and we, we have um, a, very, um, a very vital um, orchids and onions and um, individually national registered list as well. And, we talk about motivation, revitalization, urban renewal. We, we already went through all of the different plans that have been pulled out to let the design teams know that these are, this, th these are the puzzle pieces and their job is to make sure to figure out how to put it all together. Um, okay, so there's going to be a process. So stage one is the open call for the design teams. And um, each design team will be composed of um, leadership within different areas, such as engineering, artists, historians, planners, and other individuals that can undertake this challenge. And 
you can see with stage one, everything, this document's amazing because it really does go down into the nuts and bolts of how this works. Stage one, you have registration opens, then the design team submit portfolios. So here's the competition manager checks for compliance. The jury evaluates portfolios and selects teams to participate in stage two. And we'll talk about the definition of jury and so forth. In stage one, the results are announced. In stage two, you have three or four selected design teams. So we've, we're now all of a sudden, we've distilled those design teams down to the three or four. Um, and they'll create a vision that addresses the design goals created by the stakeholder committee and interact with the technical advisory group. So the stakeholder committee, um, it has been a makeup of um, developers and, and local business owners um, and community members. Ellie represents our commission. Mike represents the tribe. Um, and then the technical advisory group is comprised of city staff. So I'm the technical advisor when it comes to the community culture, culture in general, um, and historic preservation and art. Um, so you can see with the stage true drop down, you have the briefing, meet the designers, that's a public event. And with the newer manual that's coming out, we're making sure to really highlight where that public interaction is. Because I think what we've heard from the community, that's the greatest fear, is that we hire consultants that are not within the area, that don't understand our community, and they're putting plans together for us. So we really, really want to make sure that um, the public is involved and their voice is heard. Um, so we'll, there'll be so much communication on when that public interaction is and what it will look like. So you have mid-course review, design teams continue to work on concepts, there's submittals, the competition manager checks for compliance, a technical advisory group review, there's a continued stage two. Again, there's going to be a public exhibit period, and it will be really important for all of us here um, on the commission to make sure that we're talking about this and we're letting everybody know and inviting the community in and supporting all of the media that the city is putting out. Uh, design teams present concepts to the jury. The jury evaluates the teams, and I'll go through what the jury is. That was a kind of a hot button issue. Jury recommends the team they selected to the sponsor. Sponsors review jury's recommendations, approval, and then results are announced. And then stage three, the selected team, so the one team that made it through that, will work with the sponsor, stakeholder, committee, and technical advisory group to clarify the design and implement the issues. So on stage three, you have the workshop, the design team updates, the team presents updated visual concept to jury, and then the jury evaluates the manual, and then the sponsor reviews the jury's report and forwards the recommendations to city council for approval. The jury does not decide the city council is the ultimate decision on if this is an accepted plan or not. And Heather, can I get clarification on something just for yeah. everybody? Um, I, I did hear and understand that if they're like, when we get to the final design, if there are design elements from previous designs that are submitted, the city council has rights to, or, or the public, how the jury, however, we're molding this down mm -hmm. can take certain elements from each design that they like and put it into the final design. Is that correct? I cannot answer to okay. that, but that's a great question. I'll have to get back to you on that. Mm -hmm. Can you explain who the sponsor is in this? Absolutely. Let's go down to who are the players, right? Mm -hmm. Who are these players? There's also a schedule here listed. So we're we're looking at um, registration. We're not going to meet that date, obviously, which is January 20th because it's the 24th. Um, but we're hoping to get the report to council around June 21st. So this is happening really fast. Mm -hmm. Um, so you had asked about the sponsors. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. So the city is the sponsor. I'm going to oh. go up to the top here. So everybody's a little bit confused about the word jury. That's been kind of a hot button issue in um, the council meetings. So the jury is comprised of local and regional individuals representing a broad range of disciplines. So these are experts in urban design planning, architecture, landscape architecture, transportation, engineering, 
in arts and culture. These are people that are complete experts in these areas. And what they're doing is they're acting as a technical expert to make sure that these plans are viable. And so they have to go through this process of viability and they're really kind of breaking them down and going through the weeds of that to, to make sure that they can even you know, be implemented. And that, so that's a huge thing. So again, jury, they are not the decision makers. They're just helping with the process. So um, a lot of these individuals are um, people that the jury was um, comprised of you know, these experts. You'll see Katie Cox is a, a local individual and um, Steve Gill too is from Idaho. We have some people, other individuals are from the, the Northwest area. And Rob is also participating on, on that as well with Maddox Farms Productions. Um, and then Don Statsny, he's the competition manager. Um, and this is what Don does. He's amazing. So he's done, I believe it's over 65 design competitions. So he really, really understands the process. So what he's doing is he's developing this vehicle. And that's not just nationally, that's globally, correct? That is, it's internationally. He also, he specializes with tribal relationships. Um, and he, in fact, um, just helped with the Smithsonian's Native American exhibit. So he, he has very well-rounded individual um, and he's from Portland, Oregon. So he's a Northwest guy. Okay, and so his partner on this project is Jennifer um, Mannard, and um, I work closely with her. She helped put together the manual and they've done a lot of these design competitions together. So she's also in Portland, Oregon. So the stakeholder committee, um, we have, um, you can see there's quite a few developers on there. Um, Katie's on there as well. We have Deanna Harris, who's representing kind of the property business owners. John Hastings is planning and zoning. Mike is with the Kalispell tribe. Uh, we have Kate McAllister, who's uh, representing uh, the chamber and city council. And um, Molly McKenna, uh, yeah, Cannon is the Lakes Commission. Um, we have the mayor and, and El, Ellie's on there representing us. Rob's on there as well. So it's, it's a very well-rounded um, community slash um, investors on there. Um, and then we have our technical advisory committee, um, Christine uh, Coleman, she's our building official. Greg Lanning is the utilities director. Maeve Neves Lavtar is the Parks Planning and Development Manager. Amy Tweeten is the City Planner. There's me, Art and Historic Preservation Officer, Amanda Wilson, Infrastructure Development Services Director, and then Jennifer Stapleton, who's the City Administrator. Anybody have any questions on who's a part of this? Perfect. So I, I, you know, did a little deep dive in that, <laughs> but um, it's wonderful to have, have this document and I encourage all of you to go on there and uh, read a little bit more. And in terms of how do you acquire the, this document, you go on sandpointidaho.gov and you go to meetings and this is fantastic. So this is like your mother site here. So you, this is all of the meetings. So you can go in and you can look at different packets that are put together. So you can watch different meetings on YouTube. I was, I could only say for part of that last meeting um, that's over here. This was the last city council meeting. Um, so they're all on YouTube. And you go to 2023. You can look up um, the agenda packets over here for the council meetings. So every time we put together anything for council, we have to have a council packet, which has an in-depth presentation. And all of the manuals, like if I were to be doing a grant application, I would have to have the complete application done. That's all public record. So that this is the site where you would find all of that. Um, and then the other thing, there's so many amazing things on this website, but the other um, place that you guys might find interesting would be, um, go back to the homepage, the master plans. So this is where all of those planning documents are. So you, you can take a look at these adopted master plans to fully understand 
all of the integral elements um, that the master plan will be doing. So these are the puzzle pieces. And the document that we get from the design competition will, will hopefully be how we put all of that together. And this page is fairly new. I think Perfect. just in this, uh, it's been put together through this design competition. It was Quite asked handy. that. Yeah, <laughs> and it, actually it's great to have them all together. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually I was going to say, did everyone got the email, uh, the previous commissioners uh, regarding the meeting two weeks ago where Don gave the presentation of this the first time. Um, I had Heather send that out. And I know Barry, you and Val showed up and then Woody and his wife showed up and I was there. And, um, you know, that was very interesting. What What were your thoughts the first time you- saw? It was really comprehensive. Yeah. Mm, that was really good. And essentially what you just yeah. spoke about is uh, yeah. the follow-up, you know. Right. It's good to, good to have a summary and thanks for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think it's great for us to be there showing yeah. support or interest even. Um, so I'll be at every meeting, every council so meeting where this is. I have a broad question. Absolutely. Sure. What, is, what does the city, what are their expectations? What do they want to see? What do you think this design team who wins the project? What are we going to see something physical? Is it going to be another document or will it be recommendations to you know public and private well i think the the big thing is because a lot of this is in everything all of our plans are in the comprehensive plan and so the big thing about this document is will be amazing visuals and details of, of exactly <clears throat> how that can all come together so it, it's really the visual supportive document to the comprehensive plan if that answers your question and then of course there'll be priorities and the city will be the ones who will decide what those priorities are as far as projects according to funding and timeline and things I like that so, this could yeah. extend out to like 20 years really yeah, sure. oh, yeah, sure. that yeah. makes sense. and it could potentially affect code too correct absolutely <laughs> yeah okay. yeah so it's not like they'll, they'll the winning design will be implemented in July yeah, and then right. finish exactly. this year. Right. It's going to be yeah. basically guidelines for. Yeah, and those guidelines mm -hmm. are exactly what we've been waiting for mm -hmm. when it comes to the historic preservation changes right. and art. Mm -hmm. So we kind of got put on hold a little bit because we were like, well, we really need to wait and see what comes out of the design competition mm -hmm. in order to know what our future looks like within those categories. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, what our master plan has been saying, which is adopted and we need to do in terms of ordinances and changes, it, it's directly relating to the downtown waterfront competition um, and what that community wants. So what comes out of this competition will be sort of a foundation for our visual identity moving forward into the next decades. Mm -hmm. That's a great way to look at it. And hopefully solutions. I know. Some of our I'm so glad you're on the problem. I, yeah. Oh, I was, some of the solutions to our, our water quality problems mm -hmm. and things like that. I mean, it's not just visual. Mm -hmm. It just, it's going to encompass so much. And my opinion on the competition itself, just as a, as a general concept, I'm not afraid of it. Mm -hmm. I embrace pulling in different thoughts. I mean, because obviously we all have our opinion of what should be done, right? But, and Barry, you can speak to this being an architect and, you know, having large projects, I'm sure. And we're going to get some very interesting, different ideas, I feel like, that maybe we never thought about because we are so myopic mm -hmm. in our vision of our sacred space, right? Yeah. So I'm excited about it, and I I feel like I'm here to support um, staff and city council and mayor as far as getting this um, off the ground and having a very successful competition. I'm very excited. So again, I think of this as like these are the puzzle pieces, and that end result, that document, will help us figure out how to put those puzzle pieces together. And the puzzle pieces are the one through 11 up here. 
-hmm. And so for me to help be able to communicate this design competition to people, it's really helpful if I understand what these are and kind of get to know them too. Well, I'm speaking about your elevator speech, like kind of what we're talking about here. Because one of the things like being, I'm sure all of us have had that community experience where there's things are just changing so fast and people are having kind of apprehension about it. Um, and so I think it's really important to touch on the fact that it's not going to be implemented in July, mm -hmm. that we're not going to see these sweeping changes in construction happening all downtown, that it's a guideline. Mm -hmm. It's like that, that our community is the one who has the ultimate say in it, because that's the big fear is that, you know, developers are going to come in and do whatever they want. Right. And, the, and the culture that is Sandpoint is going to be changed forever. Absolutely. And so I, I saw this as an opportunity for us to have a say in what our future looks like. And so that's kind of how I'm trying to communicate it to others is this is how we, this is how we build our future. This is how we cement the culture that is Sandpoint and keep it going for the next 50 years. Um, and so it's been kind of, it, and I think that the, those, getting those points across to the public is huge because right now there's a lot of people kind of talking about, oh, it's going to be this, it's going to be that, we don't get a say, blah, blah, blah. And mm -hmm. it's kind of this building. And so, I mean, I guess we're all just gonna have to be ambassadors. For yes, that. absolutely. I really appreciate you speaking to that. And as a designer, I think of this as like a, a cur curation opportunity, right? Where you're you're creating this one unified look, which is beautiful. and. And so again, when you arrive into the community, you you instantly understand it. And you don't know the why, but it's because of all these elements. Well, and also that we have so many Sandpointians, city city staff members, people who are local, who are just so ingrained in the mix of it. Because that's also another misconception is that it's going to be all these people right. having a say from the outside. How do they know our town? But going through that beautiful presentation you just had, it's like there's so much Sandpoint citizen from the city of Sandpoint, from citizens, from the jury, from the stakeholder committee, it's like regular common citizens are involved in the process every step of the way. And I think that that definitely needs to be highlighted even more, even more as much as we can. Absolutely. I guess hey, I still, oh, go ahead. I no, you go ahead. still need a little bit of clar clarification. It, I like that you showed that little yeah, map where it kind map. of did that circle mm -hmm. of like what would be affected. Mm -hmm. So I guess it I just looks like Slimer came down on it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Same Same Slimer. Slimer. <laughs> um, so it's not just like, I guess okay. I'm behind. I I was, I my understanding was that this whole project was only pertaining to the, like the alley, but like behind the Canada from bridge to bridge, but that's totally not right. So yep. it's all yeah. of this. You're looking at all of it. Oh, okay. Again, so the because, stakeholders, yeah. uh, we decided not to mm -hmm. put very distinct boundaries. Mm -hmm. We wanted to make sure that if the teams were so inclined to envelop this entire so, yeah, area. So, all, so when so, you talk about yeah. a design, like mm -hmm. would they be like redoing the outsides of our existing buildings downtown or something and like making it all look the no, same? No, no, nope. they would like, it would be like a wonderful rendering. You know, I should have, um, we can keep talking and I'll try to pull up some of the Don's work that he's done in the past, or maybe I can do that. The why don't I do that at the next meeting, okay. because I can show you an example yeah, of what has yeah. been done in Boise, or I can even send it out to you guys, and you can research yeah, it on your an own, and really you'll cool. yeah. know exactly what what you'll be saying. But it's this amazing like rendering that shows like this is what your city could be. That's essentially it's like if I were to come into a space as a designer and. And I'm looking around at what you have and I, and I come back with a proposal and I'm like, this is how it could be amazing. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not saying, I'm not telling you how you're going to pay for it or what exactly, what furniture pieces I'm giving you the idea of what it's going to look like. Look at what you could do maybe yeah. as you plan ahead 20, yeah. 25 years. And, and again, the area reflects all of those master plans and that planning that we're trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that's why you have the historic district in there, commercial. There's even maybe a little historic residential in an area. We have City Beach now, and um, all of those areas are on the multimodal transportation, you know, pedestrian. So that's that, those plans represent the bubble essentially, Slimer bubble. <laughs> I think that's going to be the adapter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like it's coming down on it. Hey, Mike, did you have any uh, questions or comments on this? I'd just like to add that um, I did have an opportunity to talk with Don, and um, I felt like he was um, 
he asks a lot of really great questions and he seems to listen really well. I'm uh, excited about the opportunity to participate in the competition. And I think it's, uh, I think it'll be a good, a good opportunity for the city to re in, you know, reimagine what that downtown area looks like. Cause it's got so much potential. So um, we're just excited to be at the table. So thank you. Thank you. Great comment. I also wanted to ask like, what would our role be in this? I guess I didn't really get So clear. right now, Ellie and Mike are representing our commission on the stakeholder committee, and then I'm the technical. So we're we're the ones in the meeting at the moment. Um, and so what we do is we come back to you and we download to you and you have the top secret information. <laughs> so so um, being the ambassador, having a voice, sharing to the public, like what you're hearing, because you're hearing it from the source is really important because I think a lot of times, um, things get confused when they're not coming from the source of the game of telephone. Mm -hmm. um, but when when it is adopted and changes are, if they are to be made, things in our master plan, our goals are to be implemented, that's when our work really begins. Mm -hmm. So that that's with art, it's with historic preservation, it's with um, making sure that we have cultural um, significance represented here. Um, from the tribes, our community's culture, that's when we really get involved. The work begins. <laughs> so speaking of, should I talk about work groups at this moment? Sure. Okay. So um, I was struggling with trying to figure out how to successfully work in groups without having more meetings. So I love the work smarter, not harder, and I couldn't figure that out. So <laughs> <laughs> um, I just found a way that we can have work groups. Um, so if we're in, they're called teams and they're two to three, five commissioners max. It's researching, gathering information, not making decisions. So you present to the commission and the whole commission makes a decision. So it's pretty simple, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Ellie and I are going to start developing um, some homework um, and things. If any of you are interested in being a part of a team, um, and you have the bandwidth, uh, we would love to have your support. So you'll be hearing about that later, but that was a huge win for me that I just found out about, so. And actually we used this similar uh, situation before to do, they were called work groups, now they're called teams. Mm -hmm. And it's just, as long as we don't have a quorum mm -hmm. and there's no decisions made, we can get together and we can uh, get the work done. Right. And take some heat off of Heather. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it. We're all, we, I, I think, love collaborating. You know, I feel like this is a, a you know, we've always been a working commission, and uh, I feel like there's some people that really want to dig in. Mm -hmm. So this is yeah. our chat. So mm -hmm. thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm so glad. You know. And um, I was really happy to share with you all, and you guys will understand coming up in the next month that that kind of like little news blast for you and I'll keep doing that if there's yeah, um, great. something coming up with NAPC um, the National Alliance for Preservation Commission they do these really cool webinars um, any council meeting that I think you'd find interesting I'll make sure that you guys are looped in on that and then anything you find interesting and you want me to share or you want to share with the group send it to me and I'll share it with the group perfect okay. all right any other quick questions Thank you for that presentation. That was very good. Absolutely, my pleasure. And you'll let us know uh, when it goes to council, the, the waterfront design competition goes to council again. Absolutely. Okay. Perfect. Because yeah, I would, good. I will be there as support. Wonderful. And in fact, last week I spoke that was so in great. support. Uh, so I think that always helps. Appreciate your if voice. You're so inclined. So you can show up. You can watch it later on YouTube. Um, and you could even be part of it through Zoom, but not a panelist. So there's many ways to be involved. Right. All right, well, let's head on. Let's go to 5D, the Galaxy Alley downtown, our graffiti alley. Yes. Are there has a report? Perfect. So Pollock um, contacted me and they are um, looking for support for Galaxy Alley. Um, it's one of those things where um, it's a rotating canvas, which I never knew about. It was quite brilliant. 
and um, it's an education art program within the Forest Bird Charter Schools and potentially some of the other public schools as well. Um, and so I believe it's two of the students um, come and then they submit the murals and um, then it comes through us and then they get to paint it. Um, and, and there's an art education um, component there too. Um, Hannah, please elaborate. You were doing this during your POAC time. Yeah, um, it started before I was at POAC, but to my understanding, it has always been a collaboration between POAC and the city, um, but the city has allowed POAC to coordinate this program. And um, yeah, some of the murals have been there for probably over a decade at this point. Others um, switch out pretty regularly. Forest Bridge Charter School has been very active in it over the last probably 10 years. They seem to do a mural every year or every other year. Um, there's a ton of space. And I do, I do want to say that Carol and POAC do a really good job of communicating with the business owners as well to make sure that they are aware of and approve of every mural that goes on the back of one of their buildings. Um, so there is a lot of communi clear communication on that front. And I know the business owner has a say in whether or not, um, I'm not sure, I think that's handled a little bit more casually mm -hmm. because they have to bring it to the commission for official approval, but I, I believe Carol always gets an okay from the business owner before she brings it here. Perfect, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, yes, and then any mural that the students do, they have to um, keep it up. So if it's been tagged, they have to go back and fix it. So they're in charge of the maintenance of the murals. Um, there have been some community members that are not students that are interested in participating, and um, they they have participated. Again, the murals, um, they have to do a rendering. It's, it's a bit of a process, and then the mural comes through us. Any mural in the community, whether it's private or public, has to come through our commission, and then we approve it. Um, and, and that goes back to our policies and procedures for art and our art scope, which we need to be working on and we'll start soon um, as part of our work teams. Um, so it's, it's just been a really fun project. I've had other cities call me and ask about it. How does it work? It's really neat. It's amazing Instagram opportunities. People have taken wedding photos in front of it. I love that it's an education um, there's an education component. Some of the things that they run into is like the management and maintenance. Um, they, they have experience tagging. And so um, they've put up cameras and signage saying, you know, you're being watched. Um, the other kind of wild card is um, gum. Mm -hmm. Apparently there's a movement for gum and art. <laughs> Oh yeah, I've seen the Seattle. Mm. I I just it about took me a second to understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I don't know if you've all heard about the Seattle 700 yeah. square feet of alley space. You walk around the corner and it's spearmint and bubble gum. I just want to know how one acquires that much <laughs> bubble gum. <laughs> Maybe I don't want to. Apparently, it, but... our own city administrator has experienced oh, the gum well in oh, Seattle. Sure. It's a huge tourist attraction. Yeah, um, but you know, here's the deal: like, this was pre-pandemic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do I need to say anything? <laughs> um, so what they're doing is they're constantly having to use like goof off and like you know. Um, pluck off the gum. Um, they have a monthly contract service person that comes through and picks up like cigarette butts and make sure that it's maintained. Oh, that does? Clean. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see everything in the budget here. And um, this is not an actionable item um, for tonight. I just wanted to, to share this with you. Um, what I really want to do um, for you all is research the history a little bit more. Um, this is a public-private partnership, and um, sometimes those can get a little sticky. Having public art on private buildings is, is a real tough thing um, to traverse. Um, within the city. So I just want to look into it a little bit more and make sure we have our ducks in a row and that it fits within our scope as we're developing it with art. 
Um, but um, this is a really neat urban art project. And as you stated, Hannah, um, historically, this has been a partnership. I will say um, the way Carol communicated the origin of this project to me was that back in the day, you might remember this, um, there were a lot of kids tagging in the alley and Carol sort of made a deal with them that if, so <laughs> <laughs> if they would, you know, if they wanted to learn how to create murals instead of tagging, she would provide the supplies and equipment and work with the city to give them that opportunity and that canvas. Okay. Um, so this has in the past worked really well as a like anti-tagging okay. um, method. And I haven't walked through the alleys enough lately to know how effective it's been. But I know at, at the time this project was originated, it was really effective in reducing the amount of tagging in town. I have a, mm -hmm. a little bit more information too that I'm not solid on, but my yes. my kind of sister, Zabriel, I'm pretty sure she was part of the, do you know Zabriel Dillon? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was part of the yeah, origination. The yeah. Yeah. yeah, I forget what, what her part was, but it was with the Sandpoint High School art class, right? I believe so, yeah. yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I believe Carol started started the process in 2012 mm -hmm. and I came in about 2014. So I was a little bit later. I think we were just starting to have the artist work on it. And was Zabriel on POAC at that time? Is that the connection there? Yeah. We'd have to look it up. Yeah, I'll, I'll, she may I'll, have I'll been, ask her yeah. the story. Yeah. <laughs> she would, yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I'll fill in. It's just something that I think we all need to understand and think about and um, come back to. Yeah. But I was really excited that they did get us a budget. And um, yeah, so that's the update on the Galaxy right. Alley. So you'll come back with more information. I will. Next month. All right. Any questions on that? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's head on to. Sorry, oh. I do have one question. Yes. If the commission were to support a project like this financially, where would those funds come from? Mm -hmm. And that's something we need to look into. That's part of that research, but I appreciate that mm -hmm. question. Um, and since it's still open, Claire with Powak was trying to figure out the gun situation. And she's like, well, maybe I should just put like a big frame up there and then they can all stick the gum in that spot. Contain it. Right. Yeah. And so... If you guys have any ideas about the gum thing, um, I presented the gum art to Parks and Rec and they got like, they've like almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> and you were pretty disgusted too. <laughs> um, yeah, it, 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 no one was excited. I was like, well, let's keep it in Seattle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, this whole thing too, because you talk about like you chewing gum, you're like, it's like the scene from Elf when he's when Buddy the Elf is like going in New York City and he plucks off all the gum. Oh, so, so I oh think gosh. that I don't know as a creative person I was like hmm you know a little moment there like gum wall gum art but I was maybe we maybe Claire just puts a frame up there or paints a frame. I could probably find a frame from my vintage days and they can screw it on the wall and we'll see what happens. And maybe it ever has a back so they can take it off oh, and lift smart. the back and put yeah. it up again. So it's a rotating concept. Yeah, that's and then like does the museum to want that. to preserve the piece? You <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm 20, 20 part of <laughs> Just take maybe, a maybe photo. Take a photo. <laughs> we can digitize yeah. it. Yeah. We'll upload it to the community. <laughs> it's the whole experience. Yeah. <laughs> the hair heart. <laughs> oh, oh. Back, back to your question. Historically, what uh, the information that we were actually looking at today, mm -hmm. Sarah has paid for uh, materials okay. in the past. So. Historically. Historically. Yeah, there's there's got a, a little bit of a deep dive moment to that. I do have one more question sure. about how Sura works. Is the Sura fund always growing? Because it seems like these numbers are a lot higher than I remember them being when it was just the Arts Commission. 
So you know, is that an I think it would be fun to do a deep dive about Sarah and do a presentation for you guys. Would that be good? Yes. Yeah, okay. I, I have no idea Perfect. <laughs> yeah. It's incremental taxes. <laughs> so it's a small amount of tax on development mm -hmm. in certain certain air in the district. Mm -hmm. And so it does grow incrementally. And that's yeah. we haven't spent that's any great. money in a long time okay. on our public art. Mm -hmm. So it does grow. Mm -hmm. Uh, two and a half percent of CERN's budget is actually uh, committed to public art That's in Sandpoint in each of its districts, districts yeah. and that is Carol Diener's uh, legacy. So yes. amazing. And yeah. so that's yeah. the other thing is, I, you know, I'm very supportive of Sarah's work too, and, uh, you know, when we have an art project, I make sure that I'm there at their meeting or if it's the budget mm -hmm. time I'm there to make sure that they know that we appreciate mm -hmm. Ellie Ellie has been supporting that and I'm also going to the meetings and presenting to them um and it's great for them to have an idea of like what we're working on the newest one would be the silver boxes mm -hmm. that's part of the silver dollars but um yeah it's me I'm trying to remember how many people are on it so I'll go in. It would be good for you guys to know that our very young Marilyn Sabella, who was Miss Sandpoint during the development of Schweitzer, yeah. it was really funny. I we should pull that photo mm -hmm. and I should bring it up at the next Sarah meeting, like oh, share screen. Oh, Ooh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it, it's really fun. So I think that would be helpful for all of you to understand that because mm -hmm. urban renewal districts are really important. And um, there's been talk that maybe that is how the downtown waterfront design competition, the implementation of that would be funded. Um, so I think it's good for us to have our legs on the understanding of that. Exactly. All right, very good. Well, let's head on to new business 6A. And Heather's going to talk about the arts, culture, yeah. and historical preservation commission. Talk about it. Happy New Year. <laughs> um, since it is a new year, I just wanted to take this moment to celebrate you all. Um, we during that transitional time, um, we got to celebrate um Carol and Steve, who have served for many years on the Art and Historic Preservation Commission, and we're so thankful they had a letter go out to them. And um, I will at the next meeting we'll have cards that we can all sign oh, and great. celebrate them too. But um, they've been amazing community members, and I know they'll continue to do great things as community members, preservationists, and artists in our community as well. Um, so I, I never feel like it's the end. I always feel like it's the beginning of a new chapter. Um, but then we have two amazing new commissioners that have come on board. And I think all of you got to meet them, but Kiwi Gray and Caitlin Shook. And I think you two are going to just bring a wonderful energy and expertise to our commission. Um, so what, during that process, I reviewed our commission and I got I, I like I dove deeper and deeper into all of your lives. Yeah. <laughs> <It's been fun. laughs> so just a couple of notes that I wanted to point out, and I even talked about this on the radio. Um, all of you, what's so fun about all of you is that there you either have like really great roots here or you have a passion for historic preservation. But in addition to that, everybody has a unique art aspect to you in addition to preservation, which is just amazing. And um, now I'm, I've got to pull this up here. Here we go. And the other thing, you know, because this is a learning journey for me as well, um, in our code, so each one of us, one of you guys fills the code, um, which is the chapter 10 code. So we have to have, you know, arts, nonprofit background, historic preservation, community member at large, it's a variety of things. So we are completely filling all of those qualifications. But in addition, the mayor strived to have two individuals who fit the professional qualification standards. Um, so this is from the um, Interior Department of the Secretary of State. So there's five different categories, um, which would be, and this is all based on your um, academic qualification, but also your experience. And they're pretty high level. So I was talking to the state preservation office 
And he was like, it's very rare now that anybody has anybody that qualifies. So don't worry. Um, but the five categories are history, archaeology, architectural history, architect, and historic architecture. Um, and I just wanted to take a moment to celebrate our commission because if you included me, which you don't, but we would have all five categories filled Ooh, with our wow. commission, wow. which is amazing. Okay. So we are the unicorn. <laughs> <laughs> and I just think that's incredible. And so you're like, well, Heather, what does this mean? <laughs> so why this is important is as we're embarking on historic preservation, which I can't wait to share with you because that will be in the upcoming meeting. Um, you're going to see the importance of this experience as we're working with surveys and um, historic preservation districts and management of districts and dominations and, and all of these wonderful aspects. So um, I just thought that was really neat. And I just wanted to celebrate you all. And I, I think we just have this incredible commission and I'm, I'm so excited about our future. So that well, was, that's the update on our commission. Fabulous. And welcome to our new members. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Very good. All righty. So moving on. Is there any questions about that? Ask that first. All right. Let's move on to 6B, the change in meeting time and date. Okay. So I kind of did a survey. Sorry, not with you two. <laughs> You're the newbie. So <laughs> um, in it, on just playing around with the idea of, of changing the date, um, a lot of times the meetings have run up into, you know, late, late in the evening. Some of us have to travel some distance. And so I would like to um, share with you the idea, um, and this is an action item, of changing our standing meeting date to the second Tuesday of the month at 8.30 in the morning. And I will have coffee. <laughs> Throw donuts in there. And yeah. Get... <laughs> I don't have a budget for that. <laughs> we can take turns. Yes, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. Maybe like people can make pastries or something. Oh, are oh, pushing that? Hey. <laughs> See if we can sweet talk Jill over at Bluebird. <laughs> yeah. What does everybody think about a morning meeting? You could do that. It's doable. And what did you say? 8 30? 8 30. And that's when this conference room is consistently available. It's when our clerk, your your Sandpoint City staff, <laughs> it seemed like everybody was fine with it. A couple of hesitations, but I felt like the coffee. I'd make a motion to change the meeting date to the second Tuesday of the month at 8.30 a.m. All right. Well, Barry has made a motion. You want to add coffee in that? <laughs> I can't stipulate. Three in the motion. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Is there a second? I'll second that. All right. Thank you, guys. My children will be so happy. Yeah. <laughs> and Tuesday. So, what would that make our next meeting? The Coming up, Valentine's Day. Fourteenth. Well, I that... should ask. Is that all? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Any opposed, Mike? Nope. I'm in favor. Definitely. Awesome. <laughs> all right. Well, motion passes. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. I'll reschedule my Valentine's Day. Oh, oh you're doing something yeah, early in the morning? <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, then let's uh, wrap it up with 7A around the room commission and staff general announcements and comments. Anybody have anything to share? We'll see each other in just a couple of, uh, oh, couple of weeks. The follow up to my last. Mm -hmm. around the table or whatever about the snow downtown oh. I went and looked it up and it used to be it needs to be cleared by nine o'clock mm. and now you have 24 hours oh okay. fantastic okay kind of really <laughs> that's kind of terrible yeah. for like I, I, well, that's true because the, for the pedestrians yeah right. like it it actually made it worse mm -hmm. because you like theoretically you could have snow on there all the time and people would be going by code right right <laughs> because it snows at night every time and I'm shoveling it at nine o'clock mm -hmm. at night every time. Right. Mm -hmm. So, it, uh, yeah, yeah, it's just, I, there wasn't anything that specifically looks at, like, say, First Avenue. Because I don't think, like, 
it really needs to be looked at away from that. It's yeah. not just first out. Have though. you met Amanda? She's in charge of the that. snow removal and snow plan. I mean, I've, I haven't talked to her about snow. But, I want uh, you to. Cool. Because every time I talk to Amanda, I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Or, or, you know, she's just a wonderful, amazing individual, like super smart. Like there's always a really great strategy or the why mm -hmm. behind it. And I, the thing that I will never pretend to know anything about that right. area. Um, but I think what's important is that I can direct you to someone that can, and Amanda would be the person. I and she, she's like, you can just walk in and you can either set a meeting with her mm -hmm. or usually she's just up at the front and pretty available. Yeah. Because I think, you know, I just went, I, just, I tried to look at everything that was changed mm -hmm. and all that. I saw the bullet points of everything that was changed and nothing really like helps us out downtown mm -hmm. of what was changed, you know? And I like, you look at it and I get their, their huge plan to yeah. everything, you know, but it's just walking through snow when you're like on first Avenue, mm -hmm. you know, that, that people don't want to deal with that, that makes it more inviting and I thought it could fall under us. Would that be way, like but... a downtown business association thing that would be great to talk to with the downtown business association? I think, yeah, yeah, I think that plays a factor. Don't you? Yeah. yeah, I think that that would fall really great under their purview. Cool. Sorry about that bad English moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I just wanted to update you guys because I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know when it was, and so you look That's at it and you're like, well, from a you know, a landlord's point of view, that's, it's better for them. Yeah. Right. Unless they want people not walking through snow coming to their business in sure. the middle of the day or whatever, right? For sure. So. And Rick has a beautiful historic building. Mm -hmm. That was the original Ross Hall. That, that one right there, see? actually. The Ross Hall one right next to the Sandpoint building downtown. Oh, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I would like you to talk about something exciting in your life. <laughs> Don't you have an announcement to make? Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm the new executive director of Median. Yay! Lifetime. Um, I did have one thing for you, Rick. Um, we're currently evaluating. Our we have a very old computer system at the museum, so we're evaluating it right now to see if we meet the system requirements for a couple of potential like higher powered database systems. Okay. Um, whatever I find out, I will let you know, and then we'll see if that could work for you. Didn't know you'd become a volunteer, the technical <laughs> volunteer at the museum. <laughs> My services, they're they're over. I, I just I I. If you are having any visions of us having this magnificent high powered computer system available at the museum, <laughs> we might disappoint you. But whatever I find out, I, I will think pass it's the tenth now, though, right? Because it was yeah. Windows Seven. We are up to Windows Ten <laughs> across the board. So we have one. Just Windows stereotypically, I assume yours was top of the <laughs> line, but <laughs> so I'll pass that on. because yeah. um, I. It, however that works out as we start working on it. Yeah, cool. and I, I really want you guys to share more, like next time share like the preservation plan and the grant that you got and like different things that are happening with your community things. And I think that's a wonderful time. Like I wanna hear about what's going on and you never know when there's a synergy moment there too. Yeah. Well, I'll wait to start plugging all the productions we have. <laughs> <laughs> but we will have Winter 1X coming up for our education program. That's going to be um, coming up, I believe, the first week in February. Um, so that's going to come up real quick here. But uh, we got, I think, about 20 local kiddos together. And they're each individually doing their own little scene vignette. Uh, they're going to perform it at the Canada Theater. Some of them have stepped into production shoes as well, and uh, Courtney's expanding the program, but if you want to keep come see some beautiful kiddo theater, that's coming up in February, and our education program is just blowing up, which is great, um, and we're still working on Into the Woods, which will come to you in May. Yay, yes. thank Very you, good. and please make sure if you cannot make it to the meeting to let Cami know. Um, and that way, the, the thing is, is if we don't have a quorum, the right amount of people, then we can't have an official meeting. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, thank all you right. all. Thank you. All right. If there's no other questions, I would say let's adjourn. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Bye, Mike. Mm -hmm.